when I stop and think about, when I look back, you know, and I say, you know, that story about someone uh, looking in the, in the sands as they'd been walking on the beach and they saw two, they, they thought they were wanting to see two uh, footprints, but there was only one footprint. It was because of the fact that God was carrying me. He was carrying me during those times when I had fallen down or when I was overwhelmed. Our God can do anything, praise God, but fail. Aren't you glad he deals in the impossible? I don't hear nothing. I said, y'all not going to help me this morning. I said, I, I, aren't you glad he deals in the impossible? Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm going to have to just take my coat off here in a minute and just going to get plum radical with y'all. Come on. Let's go before the Lord in the name of Jesus. We just thank you for who you are. How you are almighty, all sufficient one. There's nothing too hard for you that nothing sneaks up on you, that you have a plan for each and every one of us. And the devil is a liar when he thinks that he can defeat us because we know who we are. We belong to you. And so, Holy Spirit of the Lord, I'm inviting you into our midst today to guide us, strengthen us, equip us, empower us with your presence. Let the word of God come forth freely, unhindered, uninterrupted to accomplish the will of our Heavenly Father in this place. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of worship and those that are online, let their homes be houses of worship today in the name of Jesus. We're giving you all the praise and all the glory. Come on, let's give him a good old fashioned hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let the rafters shake because of the fact we are telling the devil he's a liar today. Amen. Well, if you have your weapons with you this morning, I'm going to take you on a journey. We're going to go into Matthew chapter 25. And I have been, the Lord has just been really taking me into First Peter, First Timothy in chapter 6. And I've read it, reread it, gone back over it, prayed it a lot this week, and I'm going like, Lord, what are you trying to say? There's something going on in, in the heavenlies that we need to prepare right now, for right now. And I call it that promotion time. It's time for your promotion. It's time. I said, I'm going to say it again, one more again. It's time for your promotion. Amen. In Matthew chapter, what did I say, 25? And particularly, I'm just going to take you to three verses here. And the 28th verse, it says, Therefore, the word of the Lord says, Take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten. Turn to somebody say, Them that God get. Those that have their talents and use it for God, Turn to somebody else and say they get more. Those that have talents for God. I'm going to repeat that to this side. I said those who have talents that God has given them and fail to use it, lose it. Yeah, you need to just go ahead and say if you don't use it, you lose it. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. What you have, what you have for God and using it and build the kingdom of God. Okay, when, you know, someone say, well, I don't have very many talents. I, 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 I'm not very talented. I'm here today to tell you, use what God has given you and you will see that God will give you more. Amen. Amen. And cast the unprofitable servant into the utter darkness. There will be weeping, gashing of teeth. And so when I was uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Lord had had a studying and working on using what you have for the building of the kingdom of God. Use what you have and serve him. And then we see here that in this three, these three verses, that God is telling us, if you don't use what I give you, I will take it away 
and I will give it to someone else. This is a very familiar passage of text. It's where the God gives one five, one two, God one, and the one that had five goes out and doubles it to ten. The one that had two, he doubles it, and etc. And the one who had been given one talent, one gift, went and buried it, hid it, because he didn't want to use it. So whether that's speaking, whether that's lifting, whether that's encouragement, whether that's you, some of you have the great gift of organization. Some have the, been given the gift of serving. I mean, some of you can just really, yes, yeah, on your heart, but you're not using it for the building of the kingdom of God. To some, there's, you know, some people can have so much great administrative skills that they can take it and just, uh, and just grow things. And I mean, they're just able to just do it. I mean, it's just because God has given them that gift. But are you using it for the building of the kingdom of God? You know, we, several weeks ago, we passed out some uh, will you serve uh, surveys and ask, would you be willing to serve as a teacher? Would you be willing to serve even as a prayer warrior? Would you be willing to serve in administration? You know, to help help me to keep things going in the right direction because the 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 smaller or weaker the foundation, the inability for us to go and do what God would have us to go and do. The foundation has to be there in order for us to to reach three thousand eight hundred and fifty people on a continuous basis and to minister and serve them. There has to be people involved to communicate with them. There has to be, you know, there's the new digital ministry out there and there's opportunities for you to just be able to stay online and be able to communicate with those that are talking to us back and forth from near and far. We have people here in Muskogee that watch us online because of the pandemic. They're not coming out or going to church yet. We have people that are watching us and all throughout Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, just to name a few. On the other side of the world in Uganda, there needs to be an efficient digital ministry. That, may, that means that you might have a gift of social platforms that you could be using for the building of the kingdom right here at Christ Kingdom Builders Church International. Amen. Come on now. We need teachers. We need people that have come back and commit for six months to a year to be involved in teaching, yes, the kingdom kids from the small ages on up to teenagers. Because we're our our calling, our calling is to train up the next generation of leaders. Amen. Now that's enough of whipping you. Let's go on. Amen. Praise God. Turn to somebody and say, use it or lose it. Paul speaks to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6. And I've read that, reread this a couple of times in the, this week or last week now. And, and as I was praying and meditating over it again last night, and the Lord just kept, I kept saying, Lord, is this what you want? This is this what you want? And, and I'm right, you know, I just couldn't move, move beyond this. So let's dive into 1 Timothy in chapter 6. And the word of the Lord begins in verse 11. He says, but you, O man of God, look out, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. What are you in pursuit of? What are you looking in your life and saying, I'm on purpose for this? I'm I would say, you know, uh, you need to apologize. That's what I would say. You need to apologize to them. And they say, well, I apologize. I said, why are they apologizing? It's just half-heartedly because they did it on purpose. They took advantage of me on purpose. So why are you falsely apologize. And, and the Lord kept leading me to that. We need to use what we have for the building of the kingdom, but we need to be on purpose in our purpose. Turn to somebody and say, are you in your purpose? You see, what, what we mean by all of this, Paul says to Timothy, oh man of God, flee those things. In essence, flee the Love of money, the root of all evil and greediness and all those things and pursue righteousness. He says this word. 
He turns to Timothy and I'm and it's, and it's jumping out to me today. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Life. Are you tr are you living in your purpose? Are you just going case or sarah today will be what will be? Are you uh, planning what you want to happen on Monday morning today? Are you do you have your dreams in front of you now? I talked to uh, uh, my, my grandson, is uh, my youngest grandson has got me helping coach uh, his grades, his second and third graders in, in basketball. And so I, I, there's a couple of kids there that I just picked out and I'm going like, they've got the potential. And one of them, I said, you know what I want you to do? And those of you that have been around me know what I've said to you, those of you older guys. I said, here's what you need to do. You need to get you a piece of paper and you need to write up there your name and underneath it, the year that you're going to graduate. And I said, and you need to write under that year, all stater, basketball. You know why I said that? Because that becomes a purpose for you, a reason for you to go through all the struggles, the reason for you to be shooting all the free throws, the reason for you to running up and down the gym floor, the reason for you to get in the weight room and to work on your strength. It's a reason for you to be in the classroom working on your GPA so that you, when somebody comes to look at you, they can see that you're, hey, you're eligible. You can somebody that I can bring into my school. Say, on purpose, in my purpose. It's so important for you, no matter whether you are young or old, each and every one of us has a responsibility for the building of the kingdom of God. Why do I say so? Because God has created you, the one who breathed the breath of life in you. You are his workmanship, Paul would say, created to do good works. Come on here now. Say, I'm on purpose, in my purpose. You see, I know what I want to do tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to get up. I'm going to get in my prayer closet. I'm going to begin to preach. And I'm going to be, uh, yeah, I preach to myself. And I'm, and, I'm going to, and I'm going to get into the word of God. And I'm going to continue to build myself up. Why? Because Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. He says, lay hold on eternal life. I mean, why are you pursuing those things that are perishable? Why are you so worried about the things of this world when they'll fade away? I can tell you. I used to have a nice uh, Italian knit blue uh, shirt. That thing was popping. I used to have a white leather coat. That thing was sharp. I had the hound tooth uh, pants and the black alligator shoes. But you know what? I don't know where those shoes are. That, that, that knit shirt wore out. That, that leather coat, I can't find it. What am I trying to say? It looked good for the time, but it was a worldly thing. We ought to be in pursuit of those things that are eternal. And Paul says, whereunto thou art also called and hath professed a good profession before many witnesses. And our profession is our way of life. What is your way of life? Whether you're young or whether you're old, your profession is your way of life. And what are you doing about it? So, yeah. And here's the thing I want to drop in your bonnet today. The question is, are you a man or woman of God. In our super saturated, spiritual saturated world, we would all probably say, yeah, I'm a man or a woman of God. But you see, when we look in the biblical essence of that description, it, it, we go back to the Old Testament. That's where they were talking about, we, I would go run to the man of God or the woman of God to get a word from God. But things have changed since Jesus. You see, when you accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, there's a transformation that takes place. You now receive God himself, the Holy Spirit, with you and in you, and you can really say, I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. Uh-huh. So then becomes the question, since I have this special recognition, are you in your purpose? Are you fighting the good fight of faith? As Paul said to Timothy in the fourth chapter of Timothy, and I believe it's 11 and 12 verses, just verse 11 and 12, if you got to put it up there for them. Paul simply said for these simple words, be an example. Be an example to other believers. 
Be an example. Teach the word of God to the next generation. Don't let, listen to this. He said to people your age, let no man despise your youth. Why? Because if you know Christ Jesus for yourself, you have all you need to use what you have to let the whole world know Jesus is alive forevermore. He's not dead. And because he lives, he's in me. And I'm going to make an example for you. I'm going to show you I'm in pursuit of righteousness, holiness each and every day. Are you using what you have? Amen. Step number one, say on purpose. Go back to chapter 6 and 11, verse 11. He's saying, flee these things. What are you fleeing? He's saying to us, flee evil. Flee from evil. Run from evil. Purpose to do that which is right. There's a classic example in the Old Testament, a young man by the name of Joseph. And you know the story how Joseph had been sold into slavery by his older brothers. And uh, while in Egypt, He's uh, bought by a guy by the name of Potiphar. Potiphar begins to see the gift of God that's on him. Joseph had great skills in organization. He was able to multiply Potiphar's holdings. In essence, Potiphar's now had a little, but because he had turned everything in his house over to Joseph, he, he begins to have an increase in cattle, increase in sheep. Increase in gold in the house. Increase, 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 because God was with Joseph. And then comes temptation. You see, the devil will try to get at you to get you off your purpose. Got to get a witness. He's, he will try to tempt you with the weakest link. You all remember the, the story I showed you or told you a couple of weeks ago, Red Rover, Red Rover. Don't let the devil get over. <laughs> you know, the devil will try to get over on you because he knows your weakness. If your weakness is, uh, is five fingers, discounts, or if your weakness is between the eyes that you can't keep your eyes off of women or, or men, or you got, if your weakness, whatever your weakness is, that's what the devil will use against you. Some people have a weakness of they play video games. Some people just be wasting time just playing video games. I mean, to me, it's like I'm going like I can I could deal with it for a few for a few re repasts for a little bit, but hours and hours and hours. Some people have a problem on the computer where they're they're hooked on pornography and they will spend hours and hours and hours. What am I trying to say, Pastor Ron? I'm trying to let you know the devil will use your weakness to keep you out of your purpose. Hello? Hello? Don't, don't turn the TV off. Hello? So the devil comes and tries to use the strategy against this young viral man, this uh, Joseph. And he tries to say, uh, the, the, Joseph, uh, Potiphar's wife tries to get Joseph to go to bed with her, with her. Day in and day out, she's constantly pleading, come on, man. Day in and day out, he's resisting. I can't do that because uh, I'm, 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 I'm Potiphar is my friend and he's my master. I can't do that. That would be a sin against God. Him and against God, I can't do that. And the strategy does get less, but intensifies. Say intensifies. She makes sure the rest of the servants are out of the house and lures him to come to her bedroom. And then he says, uh-uh-uh. That's not, not me. See, the devil uses a strategy against your what? Say your what? My weakness. Everyone has a weakness. Some people's weakness is food. Some people, there's not a meal they'll ever turn down. You go on a three-day fast and the devil comes with the strategy. There's your favorite piece of uh, cake, your favorite dessert. You know that spaghetti that you love or whatever that, come on here. And it's free. 
And I, am I hello? And so whatever your weakness is, say the devil uses a strategy against me. And this young man, then the number step number one was what? Flee from evil. You've got to make a choice. I am staying in my purpose. I'm not going to go out that way. There was this basketball player from the University of Syracuse. He was all everything. Drafted by the uh, Boston Celtics. One of his old homies came up. He was drafted number one, Boston Celtics. The night of his draft, the very night he was drafted, one of his homies comes up and he finds him and they party and he gives him a snort of cocaine. He's dead instantly. The devil used the strategy. Oh, I can't say no to my homie when my homie, all he was wanting to do was be in where the money was going to be. Going to get a witness. What's number one? Step number one is flee. Flee from evil. Turn, turn to somebody and say, don't let sin do you in. The devil wants to take you out. You've got to be, make a quality decision. I'm going to stay on purpose. I'm going to stay in my purpose. Write this down no matter where you are. What you do matters more than what you say. I'm going to repeat it. What you do matters more than what you say. Your immediate reward for doing what's right may, you, you might have a bad experience. Something may not be working right. But I want you to know that God has a plan for you. And because he has a plan for you to prosper and be in health as your soul prospers, you stay in your purpose. Don't you allow the enemy to take you off of where God is trying to lead you. You decide, I'm going to stay. I said it myself. I'm going to stay in my purpose. On purpose, in my purpose every day. Why? Because what, I, what God has given me, I want him to give me more. Amen? Second thing I want you to remember today. When you stay on your purpose, in your purpose, you're remembering that God has a plan for you. And so in order for you to get in your purpose, your relationships matter. Write that down, put it in your phone, put it in memory, whatever you got to do. Your relationships matter. Your relationships matter. Why? Because the Bible tells us that we're not to be unequally yoked. Amen? Second Corinthians chapter 6 tells us in 14 and 15, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? So you've got to stay in your purpose by who you hang out with. I heard it this way, iron sharpens iron, so does, a, so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. And so if you're working on something, the devil tries to work against you by bringing people into your, a relationship with you that is contrary to your purpose. You, uh, I can remember when I was in college and uh, I was trying to be study, there was always somebody who would come to my dorm room and want to play records or play cards or whatever. But it was not in my purpose. My purpose was to pass my exams. My purpose was to get out of there and graduate. But their purpose at that time was, let's just play some sounds and have a good time. You turn to somebody and say, I'm working on something. When you're working on something, you don't have time for that because of the fact. What other people are working on may be contrary to what you're working on. Amen? A man or woman of God will follow virtue, Paul says. So it isn't just about what you avoid, but what you pursue. 
What am I pursuing? What am I going after? I'm going after, I'm striving after righteousness, holiness. I'm trying to make it. I want to do something. I want to achieve something for Christ. And so just like the stewards that were in the parable of in Matthew 25, they were those that did receive the rewards were those that stayed in purpose. The one who was rebuked was the one who didn't stay in purpose. Even though he had only one, he could have taken it and given it to the bank and got usury from it. Instead, he went and hid what he had. And that's why we say, use what you have for the building of the kingdom or lose it. Amen? Amen? Just turn to somebody and say, strive after righteousness. Godliness. Those are the things that you're to pursue. Young men, young ladies, I can tell you that the boy or girl that uh, will look at you for a husband and wife, they are looking for someone that they'll be able to bring back to look at mama and dad and say, look who I'm bringing back and I want to marry. Hello? Hello? That's the truth. Pursue righteousness. Pursue holiness. And God will bless you and give you more. I'm trusting and believing. Here's the question I asked for you this morning. Do you love God? Do you? Do you love God? Now, if you really love him, you don't care what other people think. If you really love God, you will, you will allow God to rebuke you. You will allow God to talk to you. You will allow God to say, this is an area that's your weakness that you need to strengthen. I want to strengthen it because I have... Your best days are not behind you. Your best days are ahead of you. And I've, what I've got in store for you, your eyes haven't seen. Your ears haven't heard. Nope, it's not even entered into your heart. Those things that I have prepared for them that love me. And I want you to achieve. You know, the reason that God takes me sometimes into the, these hard sermons is because of the fact that God's people have been too busy getting sugar coating. They've been too busy eating candy. And, you know, you can't grow if you just have a diet of donuts and cookies. Come on. Sometimes you got to have a steak with a bone in it. And sometimes you got to have a little harder, harder, heartier meal in order for you to mature and grow. I hate squash. I don't like it. But you know what? I want to live to a good old age. And so when my wife puts it on the table, I eat it and I smile. Why? Because of the fact. I know it's for my good and not my harm. Come on here, somebody. Come on. Do you love God? If you really love him, you'll allow God to say, okay, Lord, here I am. Clean me up. I don't, I don't want anything in my life that's not pleasing to you. Whatever it is, talk to me. I'm ready. Clean me up today. Amen. I want you to achieve I'm trusting and believing that there's more in store for you than you can even imagine in this very hour. Do you love God? Let me tell you, a man or woman of God without purpose, it's like a ship without a rudder. You ain't going nowhere. Or, and where you end up, you may not want to be. So you need to have some kind of direction in your life. Nick Paul mentions faith and love. Those are the two things that you and I should have. Go to Matthew chapter 22. And just a couple of Verses there, the 20, 37th and 39th verse. Love is that thing that helps me have that relationship with God and my horizontal relationships with other people. I have the best marriage in the world. And the reason I say that is because my wife and I both love the Lord. And after 50 years, working on 51, I, I, all I got to do is look at her and she begins to do like that. Why? Because she loves me. And <laughs> oh Lord, I'm gonna quit that because y'all, I can't get y'all too intimate. I let y'all. <laughs> oh no, I'm not gonna say that either. Holy, thank you for the checkup, Holy Ghost. Follow after righteousness. Follow after righteousness. That means a right relationship with God. If you walk in a re right relationship with God, you'll have a right relationship with other people. If you're walking in a right relationship with God, those naysayers, those doubters, those people that are trying to bandwagon on you, they might try to come 
but because of the presence of God in your life, they've got to flee. They've got to go. There are two virtues for the man or woman of God to pursue. I said pursuit, and what then they are, perseverance, perseverance, and gentleness. Perseverance and gentleness. Now, those of you that have, that have been athletic know what I'm talking about. The worst thing in the world is after practice. Why do I say that? Because after you've gone through all the plays and all the drills, then requires perseverance. What am I talking about? They're going to say, all right, everybody, get on the line. What are you going to do once you're on the line, coach? Oh, you fixed the run. You're going to run gassers. You're going to run all the way to the free throw line and back. Then you're going to run from all the way to the free throw line and back and then to the half court line. From the half court line, back to the baseline. From the baseline all the way to mid court and then back. Then you're going to run from back all the way out to the other end of the court and then all the way back. And if some negligent and has not been doing their part, you get to do it all over again. Somebody ought to say perseverance. God has a thing called going from faith to faith to faith. From glory to glory to glory. When those bad times, those hard times, those you've been praying all night and nothing happened yet, you've got to have perseverance because of the fact that there's a moment of you going from this level of faith to the next level of faith. Because you'll look back and see God brought you through because of the fact you walked in faith. You had lots of people that said, no way, no how, uh-uh. But then all of a sudden, a door opens, and you walk through that door, and God says, you're not through yet. I've got another door for you to go. Jesus says, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Those are steps of perseverance. You can't just say, well, I prayed about it, and nothing happened. I guess it ain't going to work. I'm here today to tell you it's working on your behalf. Stay in perseverance. Stay in faith. Paul said to Timothy, do what? Fight the good fight of faith. How do we fight the good fight of faith, apostle? Stay on your knees. Stay in prayer. Stay in the word. Watch who you hang out with. Because the people you hang out with ought to be people of faith. If I go to hang out with an infidel, I ought to be there to witness, give an example, and move on. I, I, you know, Jesus didn't just go hang out with sinners and stay. Jesus went to a sinner's house. He witnessed and he moved on. Come on now. So they like the world likes to say, well, Jesus hung out with drinkers and people that partied. Yes, but he would always move on. He didn't live there. He didn't go make his habitat there. He would go and he would witness and he would move on. That should be your model and my model. We go and witness and then we move on, somebody ought to say. Amen? I'm careful who I hang out with because I want to walk in my purpose. I'm going to stay in perseverance and gentleness. A gentle person is one that's approachable. People that are prideful, you can't do nothing but let them say, Lord, don't let it rain. They'll, they'll drown. You know, you've got to be, stay humble in this Christian walk, trusting and believing God's going to get you through. Can I get a stronger witness than that? Amen. Third, pursue the right things. Pursue godliness. Pursue righteousness. Stay in this thing called fight the good fight of faith. Paul said in 1 uh, Timothy chapter 6 and verses 12 through 16, hold fast to your calling. If you want to be a man or woman of God, there are those th some qualities that you need to be in pursuit of. What are they? You haven't arrived yet. I need to work on righteousness, faithfulness, love, and gentleness. Hey, run from evil. I just said, I, can't, I, I run from evil, but I pursue Christ. Let that be in your heart. 
I run from evil. I pursue Christ in all things. Closing. I remember what God has done for me. So I hold fast in my mind what God did for me in the past. Why is that so important? Well, you remember the illustration about running those gassers uh, and having to have perseverance as I went through it. I remember when I was running them, I didn't die, but I got stronger. I remember that when I got to the free throw line and went back, it was painless. When I got to the half court, it was painless. When I got through and run, yeah, I was a little tired, but after I had done that several days in a row, it did, I had stamina and didn't bother me at all. I, re, I can recall that when it came time for the fourth quarter in a basketball game, I wasn't tired yet. Why? Because I had done all of the preparation the days before. And I'm here to let you know that when the enemy comes at you and he tries to tell you give up, when he tries to tell you no way, when the tr enemy tries to say God has forgotten all about you, that you stay in faith because you remember God brought me through in the past. I know what God did for me when I was trying to preach my very first sermon. I remember what God has done for me when I said I'll go to Uganda. And I've not only went, but I preached in three countries. I not only remember when God had put on my heart, I needed to take an outside crusade because nobody was getting saved inside. And the elders said, you're a, we, we don't want to go outside. There's mosquitoes outside. It might rain outside. We don't want to go outside because it might be drive-by shooting. We don't want to go outside for, for people might come up in there and try to rob us. But the Lord had got me through many things. And I remember that he says, I will be with you. I will not forsake you. I will protect you. And so the revival we had inside, nobody got saved. The revival we had inside, no one got delivered. <laughs> the revival we had on the inside was dead, dead, dead. But when we went outside in faith, God began to show me what he could do. He opened up doors where a banker would call me and say, I hear you're trying to do something down there on 18th Street. You all don't hear me. I, you, I, you ain't heard me yet. I said, yes, I'm getting ready to have a revival crusade down here on 18th and Emporia. He said, I want to give you some money to help you do that. When was the last time a banker called you and said, I want to give you some money? When was the last time a banker called you? Where, where can I get my check to you? Well, I want to tell you what God can do. I want you to know, child of God, God will see you through as you stay in faith. We, perform, we did that outside revival crusade. Men and women were coming up out of, the, out of the dark places. They were coming out of abandoned houses from around by, behind the trees. They were coming from everywhere. They were hearing the word of God blocks and blocks away and coming forward. Men got saved, delivered. All the drug house down the street closed down. Hey, you can walk down that street. And then nobody would bother you because the enemy had been flung, flung out of that place. He had given us the ability to bind and loosen. You don't hear me now. I'm trying to let you know when you stay in your purpose, God will enable you. When you are doing what God has called you to do, there's abundant, abundant, abundant help on his way to assist you. When you do what God has called you to do, he'll not only make a way out of no way, but he'll even pave the way for you. Oh, you don't hear me today. Listen here, child of God. God's got something for you. I'm talking to somebody here right now. God's got something for you. I want you to be encouraged. Don't you give up. Don't you, uh, if you throw your hands up, let it be a sign of praise. Hey, if you're going to get on your knees, let it be a sign of prayer and in faith, trusting and believing God's going to do what he said he would do in my behalf. Use what you have. Use what you have. Be on purpose, in your purpose. And you'll see great things happening in your life. Amen? Y'all receive that this morning? You'll receive that this morning?
All right, here's, here's an assignment. Here's an assignment. Get before the Lord and say, Lord, what gifts have you given me that I'm not using for the building of your kingdom? What is it you want me to do in this hour to help somebody? You see, I learned at a young age, if God could get his blessings through me, he would always get his blessings to me. But when God gave me something, and if I closed my fist to hold on to it, like the evil steward who had been given one talent, and he went and hid what he had, it'll be taken away. So you have to be wise and use what God has given you. You and I have to trust God that as I sow into the kingdom of God, I'm not losing anything. I'm gaining more. And I believe. As Zig Ziglar would say, I'll see you at the top. Dream. Think big. Dream big. And ask God for bigger. And I believe you'll see him blessing you each and every step of the way. Let's pray. We come in the name of Jesus. That name is above every name, Father. I praise your name. You are worthy of praise. All the adoration and the glory. I praise you. I praise you and I bless you. Let everyone that in the sound of my voice receive what they've been believing for. To, yes, Lord, I'll say that. To the one who's been believing for healing in their leg, in their leg, in their leg, in their leg. Right now, by faith. I'm releasing the healing anointing touching you right now in your knees, flowing throughout your limbs. To the one who's believing and trusting for healing in their hips, right now, Lord, that hip bone, that hip joint be healed in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, I'll say that. To the, to the one who's been trusting and believing for a loved one to be healed of cancerous cells, cancer has just been eating their body up. I speak and decree and declare in Jesus' name. Let your healing anointing flow. And all you've got to do is be in agreement with me this morning. Say, I believe I receive my healing from God. Lord, to the one who's been dealing with addictions, you, you led me in a story that was not in my notes, but in my heart. Praying for the ones that individuals dealing with addictions. And Lord, I just say right now, if they're in agreement, they want to change to agree with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That He came to this earth, He died on the cross for my sins and rose again on the third day. And I accept Him as my Savior and Lord. And I thank You that deliverance is the children's bread. I'm Your child. And I ask You to deliver me right now from my addiction, whether it's smoking, drinking, pornography, whatever it is, in Jesus' name, I say it's gone, that you will no longer have that desire. Now don't return, stay in faith, stay encouraged. We ask it all in Jesus' name, Father. Amen and amen. Give him a shout of praise in the house of God today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have communion. As I said, if you don't have communion, just raise your hand. If you didn't get a communion, right down here, elder. Right down here on this pew, right here. Right here, Elder. Right here. Healing is uh, your bread. Say it's my bread. Say it's the bread of Christ. Yeah, that he said. 
Take, eat. This is my body. Broken for you. For as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So healing is the children's bread. And if we're still online, if you're at home, get you some bread, crackers or something, a glass of water, a glass of juice, or it doesn't matter. It's symbolic. As we take of the bread, we're acknowledging the fact that Jesus was bruised for our iniquities, as Isaiah would say. The chastisement of our peace was put upon him. That we're able to say that by his stripes we were healed. Say with me, I remember. In the same manner, Jesus took the wine. It was a cup of wine, and he took it and he blessed it. He said, this cup is my blood shed for the remission of my sin, of, of sins. And I personalized it. I said, it's my sins. My sins have been washed away. I'm a new creature in Christ. I put my swag on. I, I see you, Samantha. I put my swag on. Yeah. I'm an old is dead. I'm a new guy. I'm a new gal in Christ Jesus. And because of who, what he did, I am. Say with me, I've been forgiven. The blood of Jesus Christ washes away all my sins. You know, I'm in covenant. Say it with me. I'm in covenant. Well, the covenant keeping God. Therefore, I walk in all of God's blessings for me. Every one of them. The blessings of the Lord are mine. I remember who I am. I'm a child of God. He calls me an overcomer. He calls me highly favored. He calls me blessed. I remember who I am. And whose I am. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let there be a shout in this place. If you're at home, you ought to shout about it. Shout about, say, see this. Say victory. Say victory. I have the victory. Yeah, I'm not trying to get victory. I have the victory. It's already mine. Uh -huh, I know who I am. There's no sickness in my house. I take authority. Say with me, there's no demonic forces in my house. I take authority. In the name of Jesus. Say with me, from the street to the alley. My, house, my home is blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, my whole neighborhood's blessed because I'm blessed in the name of Jesus. Everywhere I go, say it with me, everywhere I go, I walk in victory in the name of Jesus. There's more with me, say it again, more with me than is against me in the name of Jesus. Oh, that sounded so good. Let's say it again. Say, there's more with me than is against me. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's more with you than is against you. And don't you worry. Those of you that are getting ready for school and college and thinking about it. I remember a story about E.B. Hill. As E.B. Hill was... Uh, as you prepare for your offering. E.B. Hill come up out of a school that everybody was trying to tell him his, his father had died and everybody's trying to tell him he needed to start going to work because he was still in high school. So you need to start helping your mama by quitting school and going to work in the field. His mother said, no, nah, you're going to college. My boy going to college. And don't worry about it. Mama be praying for it. And so he went to school and he graduated. He's the only one in his class. He graduated high school. And I don't remember the college that he went off to. But uh, as he was getting on the bus, he was so, so poor that he had one of those 
suitcases that had twine wrapped around it to keep it from flying open. And uh, he didn't have any money but a few dollars. Maybe a few dollars is all he had. And his mother had made him a sack lunch. And his fried chicken was dripping through the sack. And he arrived at his destination. And uh, he goes to, and he sees his line and it's pointing toward the enrollment, school enrollment. And he's in line. And he's got in line and he's saying to himself, I don't have any money if they, when they ask me for a tuition. What am I going to say? And the devil was saying, you need to get out of line and get back on that bus and go on back home. But he remembered his mother's words. He said, E.B., don't you worry, honey. Mama will be praying for you. And then he got to about the fifth person in the line. He's next up. The, 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 the person at the, at the desk was taking money. And he said to himself, I don't have any money what am i gonna do and the devil saying i told you you need to really get on out of line and get back on that bus but then the man comes out of his office and flunks the flank i mean the door is wide and he shouts evie hill is evie hill here and he said yes sir he's he's thinking he's in trouble he said yeah 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 yes sir i'm evie hill come here evie hill so i don't know E.V. Hill, yeah, you got a full ride, full tuition, everything, books, everything paid for. Why? Because God had made a way. He was the only student in his class. That made him the valedictorian. He was qualified for a valedictorian scholarship. <laughs> Out of here, man. Well, you may not be a valedictorian, but what I'm trying to tell you, don't you worry about what God got for you. It takes a step of faith. I'm talking to you. I don't usually do that, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I am. Yeah. Y'all just smiled about it because God's got something for you. Get your offering ready. Get something in your hand, something. We've been uh, in pandemic for over a year. And uh, yeah, our doors were closed for for many months, and we just started opening back up uh, March, in March. But all throughout that year, God has been faithful. We, I said, God has been faithful. We've not missed a mortgage payment, insurance payment, utility payment. Matter of fact, we've been doing pretty good. But it was because we stay in faith. And everything that you do, let it be fought in faith. From a hallelujah, say, turn to somebody, say, let's stay in faith. Stay in faith. To those of you that have been so faithful in your giving, stay in faith. Because I know some of you have made sacrificial giving. Don't worry. The best is yet to come. Amen. I know you made sacrificial giving. The best is yet to come. Let's pray. Lord, you've been so good to us. And I thank you for the love that you have shown to us. You've loved us more than we could even love ourselves. And I thank you for it. And I praise your holy name for it. As you have kept us. I thank you, Lord, that um, not one, I've not lost, I've had to do one funeral. Because you kept us through this pandemic. I thank you, Father, for every need has been met and that there's more in store. We've been able to not only receive, but we've been able to give into the nations. We've been able to help the people in Uganda build a school. We've been able to help kids that are needed help to stay in school. We, you've helped us to be able to feed the hungry and clothe the poor. You've blessed us so much. Now I speak a blessing on everyone that's giving today. A multiplication upon them. Heavy, heavy, heavy blessing coming back into them. 
Let there be a sudden surprise that of how, you know, the enemy tries to suddenly show up and, and cause us to have harm or cause us to be in pain. But Lord, let there be a sudden surprise of your blessing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Now, your enemies are going to be at peace with you. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying. And that which has been trying to hurt you is going to have to give to you. That which the enemy has taken from you has got to come back not sevenfold, but a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of you have been waiting on doctor's reports. You're going to receive that report. It's going to be a good one in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Ushers, you may now come forth. Hallelujah. Y'all receive that today? It's time. For you to start impacting other people. I'm going to repeat that, Jesse. I'm calling you out by name. It's time for you to start impacting other people. Some of you, I'm not going to call you by name. I almost raised this one. 